Hey everybody, Mike here. So with this video, I just want to show you guys the amount of time and effort it takes to finish a small concrete floor for an addition. Now I'm going to finish this by hand. So the first thing I'm going to do is mag float it out and then I'm going to hand trowel it. Now for you guys that don't finish concrete much, you know, finishing is all about timing. Getting on it at the right time, not being too early, not being too late. It really makes uh, the finishing process a heck of a lot easier if you know the timing. And you really only get a good sense of the timing the more you do it, the more practice you have at it. But as far as watching a video about learning how to finish, this is about as close as I could get to showing you guys the actual process. So I left the video in real time and I'll leave the, I'll leave the volume alone so you can kind of hear me, how, you know, the the sound of the mag, the sound of the hand trial, what it sounds like. Now this floor I poured, it probably got poured about an hour, an hour and a half ago before I got on it here. And as you can see, I'm using my skids to get on this with. Now if I was just to walk on this with my feet, I'd probably sink in, you know, maybe an eighth, roughly about an eighth of an inch. If it was, if the concrete was too soft, I would even be sinking in with these skids, but it's just the right firmness, just hard enough, so even the skids aren't sinking in at all. They're just kind of gliding over the surface. And the surface has just enough moisture on it, as you can see, that I, I can work up a pretty good paste with my mag. And it's not too wet. If it was too wet, I'd know because I'd be sinking in, like I said, but it's just moist enough so I can, I can work the surface up and get a pretty nice smooth surface with just my mag float. Fill in all my voids from the, you know, the bull float, get out, get out the bull float lines without having to struggle too hard. And my goal here is just to get a good smooth surface with my mag and then let it cure up a little bit longer and go over it with my hand trowel. Any of that little, any of that loose cream or the slurry you see on the surface, I'm going to end up removing some of that. You'll see here in a second how I'm going to do that I and mean, just get it off the surface. Now it's kind of it's kind of in the shade here today. It's not right out in the direct sunlight, so that's slowing things down a little bit. I'd be moving a little faster if it was out in the sun. Temperature is probably about 70 degrees out. All those, all those things play a factor in when you're finishing concrete. You can see the amount of effort I'm putting into that. I'm, you know, I'm putting some pretty good pressure down on my mag to work up the, the surface of the concrete. The, you know, between screeding it and bull floating it, it leaves some highs and some lows. Sometimes it even leaves what we call like little dimples, almost like an orange peel surface. And we want to make sure that's all smoothed out and flattened out as we finish so we don't want to get on this too late or that that process gets really hard if we're doing it by hand now see how i'm removing some of that stuff right there and just getting it getting rid of it now the i could use a power trial on this i suppose if i really wanted to but for an experienced finisher you know somebody who does it every day something this size about 20 by 12 20 by 13 you know, it, it's really less effort for me to finish it by hand, honestly, than it is to get a power trial out and do it with a power trial. It's even faster. So that's why, as a finisher, a concrete guy, you know, I'm just going to do this by hand. I'm not going to pull the power trial out for this one. You could if you want to, but I'm not going to. So this, this is a good way of showing you just how to get a, a pretty smooth finish by hand. Now this eventually is going to get some tile over it or some hardwood or something so it doesn't need to be as smooth as glass nor does it want to be for something like that. But the builder basically just wants something flat and something fairly smooth so when he goes to lay his flooring over it it's going to lay over it nice and, nice and flat. You can see how I work my way from one end to the other then I turn and I come back the other way. I can reach by using both both arms, I can I can mag and trowel both left and right hand, so I can reach about a good six foot, seven foot area as I move myself backwards. 
And would this be in about 12, 13 feet wide? I know I only need to go down one side, then back down the other, and I pretty much have the whole thing covered on something like this. Now right now I'm getting up against that edge of that building, making sure that's all filled in really nice and really flat there. I generally, you know, I'm right-handed, but I like the mag and trial more left-handed than I do with my right for some reason. It just feels more natural to me. Let me know down in the comments what, if you guys switch hands when you're finishing or you just basically use one hand. I know Darren and Luke, they, they switch a little bit, but no as near as much as I do. They're pretty much all right-handed when they go to finish. You can see that I'm working up a pretty good slurry there in some spots. I just want to get rid of that stuff. I don't want to leave it on the surface if I don't need to, so I'll just keep working it back towards the edge. And that's going to just help the surface dry up a little more evenly as, as I wait for the next pass. Now once I get off the edge with my skids, now I'm going to go around and I'm going to clean up my edges a little bit. I don't really focus, when I can reach the edges from the outside, I don't focus too much on them from my skids. It's a lot easier mag floating the edges from the outside when you know, you're standing on both feet. Your leverage is a little bit better and you can just press pretty much right straight down on the edge. So I wait and do that afterwards. No, it probably is, yeah. I'm going to just go around, I'll mag float that edge, I'll make sure everything's filled in, any little holes, rock holes, clean off top of the wall a little bit as I go. I do that with each hit. Now I'm going to remove that slurry. You can see how I just kind of scoop it up with both hand tools there and remove it. Get rid of that and then I don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm using just a, you know, this is a 16 inch mag by f about 4 inches. And the hand trial, I actually like the rounded hand trial when I, when I do my, when I hand wipe like this, I call it hand wiping. It doesn't really leave any lines. If you have a flat, straight edged hand trial, then it's more apt to leave some lines that you got to try to get out later on. With that, that's called really, it's called a pool trial. On something like this, it just makes the finishing a lot easier, I think. Now, my guys, Darren and Luke, they hate that thing. <laughs> they don't like the rounded one at all, but it's just preference, really. I've got both kinds. I've got the 14 by 4 steel trowel with the square edges, and then I've got this rounded one. And I just generally use this one more when I'm just finishing by hand like this. So I'm getting those edges really flat. And then, you know, the next thing I'll do is I'll, depending on the temperature, again, if it's in the sun, how hot it is, if the wind's blowing, anything like that will, will factor into how long I'm going to leave this before I hand trial it. Now, if it's, if it's really hot and it's right out in the sun, I might not leave it at all. I might just jump right back on it with my skids and start hand trialing. Uh, today, I, I probably gave this like 20 minutes, and then I'm going to get right back on it just enough for the surface to dry up a little bit and you can tell you can just keep checking it with a hand trial if it it'll even change color a little bit so second pass and you'll be able to see just the difference in the smoothness by using that hand trial right there how different a different texture that leaves it, it leaves it nice and smooth Again, using my left hand, um, I'll switch to my right eventually, then I'll just go back to the left. That way I don't have to stop, I don't have to stop and rest, I can use both, both arms that way. But the hand trial, being a steel hand trial, as, as thin of metal that is, as sharp as it is, it leaves a really smooth finish. Now you, you could finish this as smooth as glass if you wanted to, if you wanted to leave the concrete as the exposed floor, you just... You'd hand trial it out like I'm doing right now. Probably give it 15 or 20 minutes, hand trial it out again. Take a look at it. If you like it that way, then leave it. Or go over it one more time in another 15 or 20 minutes. And it would be, it would really be as smooth as glass.
once I got that edge magged up by the up by the wooden wall the first time, you know, going over it after that is easier and easier because it's all filled in, it's all flat now. So now I'm just gliding that trowel over it. And I'm putting, you know, I'll put medium pressure down on that trowel to work up the surface. The harder it is, the more firm it is, you know, obviously the more pressure you gotta put down on it to get a nice smooth finish. Otherwise, you're really not gonna work up any more of the paste. I'm taking, a, you know, the width, the path I'm taking now, the width of it is a little less than the first time I did. So I'll, I went down the front edge, going down this back edge, and then I'm going to go down the middle there. You can see I switched to my right hand now on that one. No real reason other than, you know, the width of this path, other than it's just a little less effort when you don't have to reach out quite so wide. So I'm taking about a four or five foot wide path this time instead of a six or seven, that's all. Now for a tile floor or some type of inlay or some type of wood floor, this is maggot, pallet, that's gonna be really plenty smooth enough if you get on it at the right time. I teach, you know, in, in the Concrete Underground, guys, my private training, I teach all about how to finish concrete like this. So if you're looking to learn how to finish more, how to make yourself a little more valuable to the people you work for, then joining the Concrete Underground is going to help you out with that. Yeah, I'll come down the middle. Then I'll jump off it with my skids and I'm going to go back around the edge and finish up the edges. You can see I didn't really get too fussy with the edges like last time. But that's, you know, this is basically how you hand finish concrete. It doesn't matter what size it is. In the winter, you know, in the winter here in Maine when we pour concrete under cover, and what I mean by under cover is they build the house and you know, then they got to put heat in it. We don't put too many power trials in a basement like that because we don't want to get carbon monoxide poisoning. So we hand finish. Me, Darren, and Luke will hand finish a, a 1,500 square foot basement, a 2,000 square foot basement, rather than rather than get sick with fumes from the heaters and the power trials. So we hand trial a lot of concrete. You can see I'm going to go just clean up my edges. And then this floor, this concrete floor is going to be done. So again, guys, you know, if you haven't subscribed yet, I come out with a couple videos a week about concrete stuff. Go ahead down there and hit subscribe. If you like these kind of videos, please smash that like button. And come on back. We'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.